Welcome back to the channel. This is Simon with Top Doc Pro and today we're going to be buffing this Proline center console. We're going to be trying out a new Stark buffing pad. We've got Stark Level R. We're going to show you guys exactly what that's all about. Let's get started. Check this out. I've got the new Stark Yacht Care wool buffing pad and we've got the little quick connector right here that we're going to be trying out today so let's go ahead and try to get this set up so basically what you're going to want to do is this looks like any other adapter that you're going to use with a buffing pad so we're going to screw this on to the buffer and this is me doing this for the first time so we're going to try this, all this out today new and see how this goes so we're going to want to get it nice and tight don't want it to come off while we're buffing and then basically what the pad setup looks like is it's just this little, it's like a black hexagon. And that's supposed to kind of quick connect onto the buffer. So we're going to see how good this actually works out. So I'm guessing you just kind of press this into here. Alright, there we go. I think we got it on. So. so once you hear a good snap, it should be locked in. If it's not, it'll fall off though when you're buffing, so you're going to know pretty quick. But there we go. So we got the start pad on here. It is a little longer, so you see like the distance between the buffer and the pad is actually a little longer than just a normal adapter. So kind of interesting, but we'll see how it works. So we've got Stark Level R right here. Um, and if you guys live in the States, you can pretty much get this anywhere in Florida, Ohio, South Carolina. Um, this has really changed the game. So for any of you new followers listening today, Level R is a hybrid compound. So it's called a diminishing abrasive. And as you work the grits into the surface, they're gonna break down and they're gonna turn into a polish. So you've got some compounding effects, you've got polish, so you get a really nice finish and it's gonna save you time. Um, we kind of did a little bit of overkill here, so we actually sanded this down uh, with Aberlon, so it looked like 500, 1000, and 2000, which like I said is overkill, so we've definitely already got a really nice surface to work with, so it's going to be a really simple buff. So we're going to put a little bit here on our applicator pad, it's pretty thick stuff, and then we want to work it into to the section that we're going to be doing. So you can kind of do about a two by two foot section. The goal here is not to fly through this. We want to really cut this out and get this surface nice so that all we have to do is follow up with a polish and a wax and we'll be looking almost 100%. So once we got that worked in like that, we're going to be trying out the new start pad and kind of see what this kind of shapes up to be. I think it's going to be very similar to Buff and Shine. It's got a similar feel and look to it. It also kind of seems like a little bit of 3M as well. So I don't really know um, going into this, but we're going to kind of see for ourselves right now. So we're going to start at 600 and we're just going to cut this nice and slow. Once we get the uh, compound worked in pretty well, we're going to increase the speed to finish it out. Alright, so once we get it worked in, we're going to come back and wipe it off. So we want a nice clean wipe like that. Um, it looks like we definitely still have some work to be done right here. And honestly, I'm not super impressed with the cut power. I kind of see some scratches in here. So we're gonna have to give another go around on this section and kind of see um, what's going on. Uh, 
initial thoughts is the pad with the adapters it seems very flimsy so i'm not able to put a whole lot of pressure on there without compromising the setup i don't want to break it or snap off the little piece so i am a little worried about that I don't like brand new pads so maybe that's another part of the issue but we're gonna see if we can get this figured out and we're gonna run this section again all right, we're back with round two. I'm gonna get try to get a little more pressure this time and try to work this in a little better. I weren't able to like cut out all the scratches basically. So let's try it again. <laughs> all right, second take on this thing. We're gonna wipe this down. It looks much better now, so I just think I probably didn't use the pad correctly. Um, I usually like to get a lot of cut into this, and I just think I was a little scared at first to really lay into this pad. So it does look much better, and that's what I would be expecting out of a little pad. So, I mean, initial thoughts will come back around after I get some more work with this pad. But I think um, this second section looks amazing. So I think it's very comparable to Buff and Shine or yeah the buff and shine wool pad um the lake country pad but i'm not sure yet so we're gonna see how this goes and i'm really not sure that the quick connect makes a whole lot of difference versus just screwing the pad onto your adapter so is that really an advantage i'm not really sure unless you're going to be taking pads on and off all day but we don't really do that so i'm going to circle back to you guys and let you know my final thoughts what are we doing so guys let's go ahead and jump directly into the process how i'm buffing the speeds all that great stuff if you guys are new followers to the channel first of all thank you and you'll want to continue on and kind of learn what i'm doing if you guys want to become better at buffing so let's go ahead and get started so we do have stark level r it's a compound that i have been using for two years now it's amazing and the reason for that like I mentioned earlier is it is a hybrid compound so it's going to break down into a polish as you work those grits into your gel coat so it's got great cut it can cut up to about 800 grit scratches and finer so it's gonna start at 800 that's why we always sand down to at least a thousand but in this case like I said we always go for the overkill so we sand it down to 2,000 now, other than that, it is really easy to work with. It gets you a lot of gloss and it saves you steps versus using like a 3M or a Presta, guys. Those are super heavy cut compounds. They're not diminishing abrasives. They are very hard to work in. They take a long time to work in and they still don't get you that finish, that polish-like finish that you're looking for. So you still will wanna come back after this step and you'll want to finish that out with a polish such as stark elevate and there's a lot of options how to do that we always go with the flex 3401 vrg and typically we want to try to use a foam pad so we're going to go with the lake country um, foam pad the orange force so that's something that we will not be showing in this video but that is something that we will be following up with so you always want to do at least a two-step process when you are sanding or restoring a boat. It should always go from compound to polish. Um, back in the day, I used to just buff a boat. And a funny story, actually, is I was at a marina and I had done a boat. It was a really large boat. It was an upper deck. It was a cabin cruiser. And basically, I came out. This was like one or two years into the business. I just buffed the boat. I simply buffed the boat with a compound and I waxed it. And then a month or two later down the road, I'm meeting with a new potential client and he points over to that boat. He's like, man, I wonder who did that boat over there. He's like, look how swirled up it is. It looks horrible. And I'm like, yeah, I wonder who did that. And funny story is it was actually me. So that really uh, kind of put things into perspective and quickly after um, you know, because it was true, I was noticing that, especially when you saw the finish in the sunlight, it was all always swirled up, and you do not want that, that looks horrible, and as a professional detailer, you, that's just something that you cannot do, so you've got to get that fixed, and that's what I did, and now we always polish, 
So you can polish with the rotor if you want. Otherwise, get yourself a Flex 3401 and that is going to be an awesome polisher. It's really heavy duty, it cuts great. It's just a heck of a machine. I got off track for a minute, so let's get back down to business. What you guys are here for, what you guys are trying to learn, and that is how to buff, how to compound. So if you guys have been following me for a while, you do know I love the DeWalt rotary buffer. If you are new to the channel, well, that is new news for you guys. And the reason for that is pretty much you've got DeWalt, right? You've got Makita, the two top of the line buffers in the game. What I like about the DeWalt, first of all, it's got an amazing appearance. It's really sleek design, really aesthetic. I do love the fast trigger. That's the number one thing for me is the fast trigger. I want to be able to cut right away. The Makita has a slow trigger and I just do not like that. It wastes about a second of my time and I try to be as efficient as possible. Also, the machine balances out very nice. It's very powerful and it is just a tad lighter than the Makita. So if, I don't really know that you're going to feel that necessarily, but it is just a tad lighter. So DeWalt definitely 100% is what I go with and it's the one I recommend. I notice a lot of people who I get to try it out, usually typically over time, will like the DeWalt as well. So I think that's something to consider and it's a pretty decent price range. I mean, you're looking at about 200 to 250 depending on where you're buying it from. So I don't think it's over the top, but it's a necessary machine that you need to have when you're trying to restore your boat, especially if you want professional grade results. When you take a look at my buffing style, it has changed over time. I'm about four and a half years into experience with buffing. I used to always buff left to right, or you could say horizontal and vertically, almost like I'm polishing or like I'm wet sanding, but actually buffing is more freestyle. So you can kind of do what you want. I like to work sections in and kind of expand out or fan out. So I'll start in the middle and then I'll kind of work that section in moving up and down really slowly, really getting that cut. That's why you see me turning that pad on an angle just a little bit. Like I said, this pad is pretty flimsy. You can see it's really flexing with the gel coat structure. And I'm not necessarily a huge fan of that because I feel like it does give me a disadvantage when I'm trying to cut those corners and things like that. I want a nice stiff pad, which Buff and Shine does kind of offer. So that's why I've been using that one for quite a long time. So it's been a long time since I tried a new pad, but I thought it was worth it, Stark always comes in with innovation so definitely worth trying it out when it comes to compounding and really trying to be your best at it I have seen guys like simply try to fly through this process and it just never works out. So the important part is the number of passes you're getting on each section and the amount of pressure you're applying. So you need pressure. You also need to run the rotary extremely slow. So I think that's a rookie mistake. A lot of people just getting into detailing, they really honestly have no idea of where to run the RPMs and that was just like me four and a half years ago when I started. I didn't know if I was supposed to be running it fast, if I was supposed to be running it slow. In my mind, I thought you were supposed to be running the RPMs faster to get a better finish, a better cut, right? But actually that is wrong. You wanna run the buffer slower. So we actually run at the lowest possible speed, which is about 600 RPMs on a DeWalt. So we wanna start there. And then after we get that section worked in, we will increase the pad. So it goes like this. So it goes 600 RPMs. You're going really slow. You've got that pad slightly angled and you're trying to get as many passes as you can until that is completely worked in. And then to give it a good finish, we're actually going to increase the RPMs. Now I'm trying to keep it nice and slow for you guys, but you're gonna wanna increase the RPMs to about 1400. And this is specific to level R. So. You got about 600 RPMs to 1400 is pretty much the range with level R. That's where it runs best at. So every compound is a little different. I'm just telling you guys a little cheat code on where level R likes to run at. So you're going to start slow, going to tilt that pad, work in the compound the best you can, get a crazy amount of passes. And you guys can always look into the surface as you're buffing. I got a good angle here. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing a little better. But always look into the surface. Is it still dull? Is it still scratched up? 
um, really work that compound in. The number one thing that you're not going to do is you're never going to work it in too much. So that's very rare um, and almost nobody does that. And then once you do get it worked in pretty well, like I said, you do want to finish it out at the higher RPM and then you're going to want to keep that pad flat. So it goes from slightly tilted to a complete flat pad to finish it out. Then you're going to give it a good wipe down and that's where you're really going to be able to see how it's going and if you need to make adjustments. Final words of advice before I jump into my final thoughts on using the brand new Stark Wool Pad. I wanted to get a little bit more experience with it and kind of see how it was handling. So that is going to come up next in the segment. But guys, very important thing to discuss first. Level R is not a heavy, heavy cut compound. If you guys are trying to pull out oxidation, first of all, I would highly suggest that you guys wet sand those surfaces. But level R is definitely not the best compound when you're pulling straight oxidation. So like I said, I do not recommend it. Um, but if you are going to do it, there are better compounds out there like 3M Heavy, Presta, Ardex Super 600. You're really picking and choosing. They're all very similar. So just pick one and get started. But I just want to make that very clear. Level R does not handle heavy, heavy oxidation. I've tried it. It doesn't work. So it does fit our system, our sanding system. It's a hybrid compound. It's gonna cut great, but it's gonna finish great as well. It just isn't gonna sit there and cut all day long like that 3M Heavy or the Presta Super Cut or Ardex Super 600. So something to really keep in mind, we have pretty much used Stark Level R because it fits our detail style perfectly. And that is pretty much why you guys will see me use Level R in almost every single video that I make. So that is very important, guys. Um, I know you guys always got questions about that, so we cleared it up today. We're going to kind of keep it very simple. If I did move too fast, let me know in the comments. I try to keep this video as simple and kind of slow down as possible so that a lot of you guys who are probably watching the channel are trying to learn how to buff, and I want to make sure you get that valuable information. So guys, let's go ahead and talk about the Stark new wool pad. What are my final thoughts on the Stark wool pad? So first of all, I want to say shout out to Ken, shout out to John at Stark Yacht Care. They're always working on innovation. So a really cool, unique new product um, or new pad in this case. But yeah, basically guys, at first I was a little hesitant on the pad. I didn't really understand how to run it. But as I kind of started working with it, um, one thing I noticed is it's really flexible. So this thing's kind of flimsy. It's, I would say it's strong, but it's flimsy. So. You know, it's gonna be great when you're cutting corners and caps and underneath on the sidewall. But when it comes to actually cutting power and trying to get a really good cut, it's gonna kind of fold in a little bit. And I feel like that kind of releases some of the pressure that you're looking for when you are looking for a good cut. So I will say that the Buff and Shine pad is still my favorite in terms of durability, the price point, right? You've got, I think that's like 22 or $24 with Buff and Shine. This one's about $35, so a little bit higher. You do get the quick connect where you're going to simply press this button and it's going to come off. Um, we pretty much never use any other pads so this wool pads always stays on. So for us it's not really a convenience factor um, and with the buff and shine all you do is simply screw it off so I don't think there's a whole lot of difference there. But I do encourage you guys to try this for yourself. As I did work with the pad I got a little more used to it. This is the first time I've used a different pad in like two years so um, I'm really used to that buff and shine. So yeah, it, it did get a little bit easier. Um, I thought the cut was good. I really don't think the finish was necessarily as good as Buff and Shine. Um, when you really finish it out at high RPMs, I thought the you know Buff and Shine might be a little better. But yeah, other than that, guys, uh, I would encourage you guys to try it out for yourself if you are interested. And I will link the product below in the description. And you guys can purchase that there if you do want to try it out. I do appreciate you guys watching the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to hit that bell notification so that every time I release a video, you will be notified. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. I will see you on the next video.